Hi, everyone. Welcome to Consciousness Incorporated. I am Adam Vasquez, and we and have I'm, lovely. I'm Denise Conkey. Yes. <laughs> we so, purposely do not rehearse, so Adam's going to talk about that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so I was to say, you know, this this series called a podcast, called a show, called a streaming live YouTube series, whatever we want to talk about it, whatever we want to call it. We're really focusing about the intersection of consciousness and business. So each week, on every Thursday, we'll be doing a live stream at 12 o'clock. If we, depending on our schedules, we might move it on Wednesday or a Friday, depending on the week and how the flow is going. But we're just coming together and we'll have a topic each week and just making it a bit of a flow in itself. So we have agenda items. We have some questions that we've kind of reviewed, but I have really kind of no idea where Denise is going to go on some stuff. And Denise doesn't have quite a full idea of where I'm going to go on this stuff because we, we've learned, especially from the last podcast or last show, that, that the feedback was it was better when we were riffing in our own conversation. So, yeah. so be patient and have fun with us. <laughs> we were nervous. And it was our first one. A little bit so, because yeah. we do – we do talk and riff a lot. So we were like, oh, we have to get our points in. And uh we're not we're 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 loosening it up this week. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And, and that's forever. the point is we're just we're just gonna keep tweaking the format, see what works. Your feedback's awesome for us. So so just just be patient and <clears throat> just be in the flow with us and we will go down rabbit holes like where Denise is we'll go up into the ether we'll come back down to reality uh, but it's going to be fun so so today and I'm mime. A... that's for my children <laughs> that's right. like are you gonna mime uh? and Denise yes by the way she can mime and she is a trained mime trained artist mime. is that the term mime artist it's like what's the term I'm sorry I I, for the ignorance <laughs> I, I I publish that to the world now, but I usually kind of keep that quiet. <laughs> it's excellent. So 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 uh, Denise will entertain us with her miming capabilities. You are we are both in boxes. Let us out, you know. <laughs> so so what a, we had a great week last week. We talked about a lot of things. Denise, why don't you do a quick recap? Oh, yeah, I would like to. And uh, we got a lot of feedback, which most of it was really, really good. Um, one person said, wow, you're covering a lot. And yes, we are covering a lot because it's the universe. <laughs> and we wanted to kind of set up kind of some of the things that the variables in the equation that we believe. I was teaching a, um, well, I was I was guest lecturing a, uh, insight class at Marquette this week. Shout out to all my Marquette buddies if you're watching, my peeps. But we talked about strategy being like you're looking for and planning and strategy as it relates to the consumer part or the prospect part. It's kind of like you're looking for a needle in a haystack, but you have a whole field of haystacks. And there's a needle in each one of them. And if you connect the needles, you can make a picture, you know, like connect the dots, la, 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 la. So um, it's hard because you have to pick out certain needles. And so the first episode had a lot of, um, let's just say they're, they're not necessarily throwdowns, but these are the, these are the elements of the, the equation that we are using moving forward. One, mathematics is the infrastructure of the universe, and you only have to look at divine ge geometry like turtles and dandelions and a drop of water. It's math that creates this divinity and perfection. Vibration, we're going to use that term a lot, especially today, is the language of the universe. It's sound, it's color, and everything vibrates. We vibrate. Humans vibrate, animals vibrate, plants vibrate, galaxies, rocks vibrate, everything vibrates. It's just vibrating at a, a different, different megahertz or whatever you want to call it. Um, and, the, and I'll just add to, the, add oh, to that. Yeah. I, mean, yeah, I was just going to say add to that is 
uh, that we will reference, like the map of yeah. consciousness that we showed. So if, if there's anything that we're covering here, we'll try to reference past shows, maybe future shows that we will be covering more deep. Also, any books that we reference or any other things that we reference, we will, I will put in the comments section after the post show, which is usually uh, Friday. So tomorrow is when, yeah. you know, the live stream will be, you know, up there, saved, but then we'll update everything with links and everything else. Right. So I'm going to go back to my, my list because I don't remember what number I was on, but, you know, according to humans, we feel better. We like vibing high for us and vibing high for us is, is sort of an indigo and a, it's, it's sort of a rush. So we're going to talk about that rush today of the higher vibration because it comes in a couple different ways and you can actually make it happen if you get good enough. Um, our understandings are, are all cultural law and we're not talking about cultural law. We are talking about laws that transcend every culture here. Because good and bad is cultural. What you learn when you're a kid is cultural. Uh, it differs around the world. And so, you know, people say, what is the truth? Well, it's your truth. You know, there is a universal truth. And uh, that's the rules of conduct that we're suggesting everyone live by, frankly, uh, because that's the only um, unifier of all humans. And all other things. So, you know, we are all in, all in on the practice of trust. We practice trust every day and that's how you get good at it. And, um, you know, we're, our ultimate goal is to elevate capitalism. So th that yeah. is like bearing the lead. We're trying to elevate capitalism. Yeah. Yeah. And we're getting to that more karmic model, right? Yes. Knowing that there's a lot of moving pieces and the universe is doing its part and we all have to do our parts as part of that growing process. But, yeah. you know, when you're really in it, like, and you feel it, that's really the flow state. So, oh, it is. so let's talk about that, Denise. Let's just hop into it. Though. Thanks for the recap. Okay. It's exciting. So I, I will, there's, there's some slides we'll show and we'll get into that. But first question I want to ask is you know what is flow to you like how how have you experienced what is your experience with flow okay <laughs> great question Before we get to the ac some of the academic stuff i would really want to i want to hear you, denise's personal journey with flow oh okay well you know people talk about runners high i don't run i can't run down the driveway so i don't get to do the runners high thing but I have experienced flow a couple ways. And you, they talk about when you obtain mastery at something, you, uh, you're on automatic pilot. Uh, so, you know, being a shortstop in the major leagues is nothing but flow because all of that is just you're beyond your intellect and your physical being. And people understand the flow of athletes they understand when people, athletes d disregard the clock and they're just playing and it's all great and it's going well. But what about non-athletes? Because again, I don't run down the driveway and nor am I a player of anything. So I get flow two ways. One way is I've experienced it when I write, like I'm a writer. So sometimes when you write, it's like, oh, what do I write about? Uh, you know, people talk about writer's block. Well, writer's block is the opposite of writer's flow. And sometimes write, you know, I can, I can flow with the best of them on the written word. In fact, I'm a better writer than I am a talker. So keep that in mind. This is, <laughs> so if you want to read stuff, then that's pretty good. But if you're just hearing things, it might not be as good. Oh. Um, so <laughs> flow for me both, so. is the, the the mastery flow for me is in writing but um you can get flow in your life yeah. you can get it in the moment and my flow states uh, have come 
well, there's higher ones and lower ones, but the highest ones I ever, I ever did were meditating when, um, uh, and they were, they were, I did that three times and all three times was a guided meditation as opposed to me just going outside, but I can float. I can do that too now. Uh, but they were, I, I know I'm talking long, we're supposed to interact, but the guided meditations that I had that made me go out of body were like, holy crap, I'm in the, where am I? I see colors, I see stars, the colors are moving. This is like a different place. And it is as real as, you know, this, this podcast or this video. It is as real as that. And if you believe that we can transmit through the internet, this is something nobody thought about many years ago, you know, and people would have said, oh, poppycock, that will never happen. Well, if you say poppycock to, I can't get there, you're wrong because I got there. Mm -hmm. So don't say poppycock to that because it it is real as anything. The other kind of flow that I I work on every single day is this this momentary rush mm. this i can okay um my children should not listen when, to when you're when you're in the moment in in that specific doing you're something present. specific right yeah but you're present and i've read like oh all you have to do to get to flow is be present well that's like all you have to do to be a millionaire is to get a million dollars being present is hard mm -hmm. and I make sure I'm present multiple times a day. And that is just, it's kind of like a little orgasm. And yeah. I don't know what you, you fellows yeah. feel about that, but it's kind of like, it's like, Oh, crap. It's a release. there's a release it's happening. Yeah. I'm there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's and then, like but, you know, then the challenge is once you realize you're there, you're like, Oh, I'm losing it. <laughs> Yeah, I want to keep it. So the length of it uh, is something that I, you know, I work on getting it yeah. and I work on the length of it because we're humans and we're all ADD and, you know, we, you know, we, we, we can't, uh, we, we can't be there all the time because, oh, the mailman's here, you know, and then right. it's like, thanks a lot, mailman. Well, that, you know, and, and so yeah, I have similar experiences with flow also. I, yeah, I, I think it's interesting. Um, I think, you know, we were talking about just the types of flow state that there are. And I think you had mentioned yesterday that there's something like seven or plus more flow states yeah. that you could get really specific on. Yeah. But, you know, I, I feel like if you're complicating flow, then you're not in flow. Like, you know what I mean? Flow. Yes. It, it, okay. and, and it really breaks down to two, from my experience, we can call it whatever. We're just making this up as a term because I don't think it exists. If somebody's written an article on this, I haven't seen this, but talking about it from a strategic flow versus a tactical flow. And and what I mean by that I is- I love that. I love it, that. You're, and and from a business- I love yeah, that. Yeah, from a business perspective, you get it a little bit, makes it a little yes. bit more sense. It's like- the, the bigger macro flow, so to speak, the strategic flow, as we call it, or we're calling it now as of today. <laughs> so we might have just invented you a heard term. heard it here first. <laughs> but from a strategic perspective, that's the that's the compounding everyday effect, right? So it's, it's yeah. meditating, it's being present, mindfulness, be, thinking abundant thoughts, making abundant decisions, trusting. And, and it's, it's like letting go really right it's just letting go you talked about trust earlier denise it's trusting the universe to the point that you just let go and you know there's you know for those who are more on the religious side you hear the term let go and let god but that's peak flow state um and that's in the macro so that's like synchronicities right that's yeah that's when things line up perfectly like you find a parking place perfectly you just your day is good right so so I always try to set my day off with meditation to get, make sure I'm kind of at a, that sort of strategic flow painting. 
that's when opportunities come to you or a new employee that may have been that you've been looking for, but it became effortless when you reached, you just sent a post out before, yes. but they just needed to leave their previous job and you needed to wait and be patient for the right. universe to reorganize things for you, right. right? The universe has its own timetable. It's not yes. your timetable. It's its timetable and it's you, 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 like it's bigger than a, like a Cray computer in that it's managing mm -hmm. all of this stuff everyone's journey and story and the um the mistake that people make is the same mistake they make in marketing well it's not a mistake but you have to start with it's all about you know, it comes from a lack of awareness and the yeah. not getting, it's it's, for, it's being further away from the truth i guess right yeah it's and and people say it's all about me so how come isn't you know what's in it for me big marketing important point that I often go to because when you're thinking about how do I how do I talk to a prospect well a prospect is going to go what's in it for me so you have to put that in there but when you get to a point of consciousness it's no longer about you because you are everything everything is you and that the idea of ego or practical, um, like what's in it for me, or why isn't this coming faster, or I'm ready for it now, but I'm not getting it, gets in the way of what it really is. And so, yes. So one of the questions I have, and I want us to cover, but I want us to get a little bit more detail on the further defining flow and what it is and what it isn't, is how do you know you're in it? But don't answer that yet, because I want to dig into more things. And, 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 and Denise had put together and found this great diagram. I'm just going to throw this up here, just talking about um, Mahali's uh, flow research. And why don't you walk us through this? Because I actually haven't seen this before until you presented it to oh, me really? today, actually. Okay. Well, go to his TED Talk. That's that's This guy is the father of flow from a psychology point of view. And he is... Um, I don't even know if he's alive anymore, but he's got a TED talk from like 2002 or four. And um, he's got a really and, long and name. And Denise, from a psychology point of view, what that usually says to me is it's still stuck in the physical reality of oh, things. Oh, but right? he is, he's definitely not that guy. Okay, cool. Yeah. He's so I think that's that important, guy. but that's been my and, experience. And Carl, right? he mentions Carl, Carl Young. Yeah. UND. He was, if you read, actual, you know, Jungian stuff, he's out there. He is a metaphysicist. And we often use, you know, he's the father of archetypes where there's this, and we use archetypes all the time in uh, marketing, but Carl Jung is out there. And so yes. is Mahaley. And they are people who are, they're psychologists, but like this is his research. So he became very interested actually. And, and, and Denise, real quickly, and Carl Jung, he, he, he was the author of uh, Man's Search for Meaning, correct? Uh, uh, you're putting me on the spot with this. I That's okay. No, don't worry. I, I, I will know, fact check I know it. But Carl Jung that defined business. Here. You know, like I know Maslow. Well, I don't know what Maslow ate for lunch. So I, you know, Maslow defines business too in a lot of ways. But <clears throat> When you, um, okay, okay, he was in it. He gave, and I don't remember if it was like 5,000, 4,000, 8,000 vibrate, vibration notifications to that many people. So in the course of a day, he would make vibrate and say, what are you feeling right now? What are you feeling right now? What are you feeling like now? Because his interest was, how do people get through war and still be happy? He's a mm -hmm. happy guy. He's looking at happiness as a science. So when he did that, he realized that there were this many states of being and that there was a correlation between ability and challenge. 
Yeah, and real quickly, sorry, Carl, I was mixing up Victor Frankl with Carl Jung, so everybody who is, studies this stuff, please apologize. I read so much book and names start to blend on me. I apologize. Okay, thank you for Googling that mm -hmm. um, <laughs> in real time. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, people talk about flow uh, as it correlates to mastery, and that's one way to look at it because your ability, I mean, people don't inherently want to not work or not do anything or sit on the couch and watch TV or not um, provide value to others. That's not what most people are, truly. Most people want to do stuff and be challenged and learn. And frankly, that, you know, just because we are continuous learners, you don't have to be like that, but you have to bake a cake for your family because that shows that you have you have um, interest in doing something. So this wheel is about challenge and skill. So the correlation between challenge and skill, if you if you look at it like a wheel, mm -hmm. it it actually goes bigger and bigger. And so if you know like X, Y access stuff, you know, you want to be in the upper right quadrant and whatever you do. So you don't want to be in the lower left quadrant and whatever you do. Isn't that you the same in the for upper any, right quadrant? Ironically, isn't that the same for any analyst chart? Like the lower oh, yeah. left is like the bad place. So uh, yes, you know. yes, any analyst, and there's a lot of fun ones too. But uh the upper right quadrant is where you want to be, and the upper right quadrant here is full of flow. And it's bordered by arousal and control. So there's a lot of interest in when you're flowing, are you in the flow state that is control or are you in the flow state that is arousal? Because the flow state that is in control means that they both mean you are one. You are one with whatever you're experiencing. You're a surfer, uh, the, the Hamilton guy, Laird. He would yeah. talk about being one with the, the wave. Yeah. He wasn't talking about I'm, I'm theoretically one with the wave. He was talking about I am physically, mentally, spiritually, I am the wave. So flow is being, I am that. And is it arousal or is it control? Now the control thing, I know I'm babbling on again. The control thing is, is it controlling me or am I in controlling it? And so when you talk about people who are in a trance-like state and they're talking in tongues and stuff like that, are the, they're in a flow. Are they controlling the flow or is the flow controlling them? <laughs> Well, and, and, and Denise, the irony there is, is, you know, the more you try to actually control it, the less you're in flow. So it implies, from my experience, it would imply that letting go is letting go of control personally and allowing the universe to take the wheel, so to speak. Yeah. I mean, you still and have then, to do your part. Yeah. It's a co-creation experience. It's exactly. Just, you know, but the idea of arousal too is it's the rush of doing this. Mm -hmm. This is a positive, wonderful place to be. It is. It is when you're there, like you're writing, like or like I'm writing, or runners are running, or uh, Aaron Rodgers is playing football. Heart. <laughs> um, Love him or hate him. I'm kind. I used to love him, and then I hated him, and then now I love him again. Um, that is, <laughs> that is like an arousal state. It's like, oh my god, I'm on fire. You know, yeah. I'm on fire. I am. I'm having a. Fun, I'm having fun. So, this is this is his research, and his it, research is kind of where everybody else after him started. Yeah. Yeah, it is super fascinating. I mean, you're trying to sort of quantify something that is a is a knowingness. I mean, yes. it, and it, you know, outside of that slide and what we were talking about, it that's the part as part about quantifying consciousness, right? 
and 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 this is why there's so many interpretations distortions because the other part is it's all your experience right so so at the whole point we talk culture right mm -hmm. and we talked about this last time about diversity right the universe wants to experience itself through you in the most diverse number of ways so it can get closer to knowing itself yeah which is like wow right yes, right wow. i mean it so so we're really just fragments of the universe but we're and we'll get into this in future podcasts about it. we're even fragments of our our own higher self because right. what now is being discovered is that if we talk about what Einstein and other uh, physicists he have flew. determined. That all he time flew. and he talked about flying yeah. all the time. He was in a flow state, yeah. You know, and he oh, yeah. recognized yeah. it as the basis of quantum physics, right? That, that's all, all. All of that is one thing. So, so let's. Uh, before I still want to talk about, we're going to talk about what it's like to be in a flow state and, and signs and, and symbols and all that fun stuff that you'll know yeah, when you're in the it momentary in flow it. state and the the or the strategic and the just, tactical. yeah just from the strategic cool. we'll talk about from a strategic cool. perspective cool but yeah so so but i want to talk about letting go because it really is cl it clear in my own education experience working on this myself for the past several years and a lifetime that the the real hack in this that the fastest way to get there is letting go of all control let just letting yeah. go and, and 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 so let's discuss what that means right uh, what is letting go what is letting go and what are you letting go of oh okay so when i was um when i was reading about all this stuff like after high school um, I entered a period of my life, I don't know if I ever told you this, but I entered a period of life, it's like two years, where I didn't use the pronoun I, hmm. didn't use it. And that was me letting go of my ego. Hmm. And I also didn't make decisions. I kind of let things happen. A grand experiment. I can tell you that in the practical sense, that didn't work. I mean, I truly didn't respect who I was. Mm -hmm. I didn't respect me as a part of the universe. It was like I escaped from the universe. Mm -hmm. And the... <laughs> The book, and that was really kind of devastating because it wasn't, it's not superficially about I am nothing. It's yeah. really, I am everything. Right, right. We it's are, not, I am, we are yeah. everything. Yeah. I am everything. And I didn't get out of it. Okay, this is going to be funny for some people. And they're going to go, Ooh. I didn't get out of it until I read The Fountainhead. <laughs> and then immediately I read Atlas Shrugged. Now, those books have been tagged by both sides of the aisle as yeah. being like amazing and evil. Okay, they are very complicated books that are highly manipulative. And if you haven't read them, don't make a comment about them, please, because... <laughs> The side of the aisle that I am on is the side that condemns those books and condemns Anne Rand, whatever you want to call her, as an evil person and a crazy person. And she, you know, she presents, it's like watching an argument between both sides of rationality and objectiveness. And it's like, it's like ego versus non-ego. And she, the whole book is just about this argument, both of them, under the the under the infrastructure of um, finding flow in architecture and finding flow in Atlas Shrug is about the railroad industry. So that really, those books really helped me 
get out of that passivity. It's not passive. It's active, right. it's not passive. You, you, so. there's, you're talking about books. There's a great book I recommend everybody reads uh, by Michael Singer. From, it's The Surrender Experiment. And you know, uh, also there's another good book from Dr. David Hawkins, Letting Go, which talks about how you move up and let go of the ego as you go. But I think you know, the point is it's letting go you know, from my experience, it's when we manifest, when we're when we're in a creation mode and we project the vision. So we, the end state is there, you know, and you're supposed to take that first inspired action. Right. And and in society today, it's all about planning. we got to have plans. we got to have all these contingency plans. we got to have risk management and all that stuff. You know, it's ironic because all the risk management, honestly, creates attraction to those risks right so you're actually creating those risk realities by even bringing manifesting them into reality which makes risk managers actually not even relevant in the future of this right. universe i'm but, still gonna buy car insurance though yeah i know well sometimes it also okay. makes you so you don't have to think about it right so you're not like worried about okay if i get a car accident no so so what i what i found is like if you're here point a you're trying to get point b you know, focus on point B where it is, focus on the first step of point A, and then be open to le just letting go of the process to get to B, right? So right. you may think you're going to drive a car to get there. And when in fact, if you're in flow state, you might just teleport there. I mean, it can happen that quick. Like it is like feeling like you're swept off your feet. The easiness, the, it, it's like when we talked about last time about power versus force, when you're forcing something, when you're at a lower level vibration, when you're doing work, doing activities because you're afraid that if I don't do these things, this isn't going to happen. So I have to do my stuff. I have to do it. I have to do more. I have to work harder. I have to do this. But once you let that all go, that limiting belief and realize that when you're in flow, yeah, there's work to be done, but it is not a forced effort meaning opportunities synchronicities come to you like it, it is just a totally different yeah easy like it's it's the difference of paddling upstream versus paddling downstream yes right? it's the slipstream yeah it is it's, it's like it's matthew like, mcconaughey green light it's the great slipstream. book by the way fabulous book i love that book and the audio is pretty good yeah, the audio is great because it's him speaking and it's yeah and, and there are a lot of yeah. people who are on um TikTok who like talk like him and it's pretty funny. Um green light. <laughs> green light. Green light. I recommend everyone uh, read that book. And it will make sense because that's what he's saying is he's looking at green lights as science for the universe that he's in the flow. That's the path he needs to go. Yes. And it's the slipstream. And I've I've talked to people in business and people I've met through uh, you know, marketing and ad agencies and entrepreneurs and, you know, they talk about it. They say once you hit the slipstream, mm -hmm. it's like things happen. You can't, power force, you can't make them happen. Right. You have to connect into them as they're happening. And that sort of is, we talk a lot at, at, at work about, uh, um, surfboarding megatrends, you know, you can't boil the ocean, a lot of metaphors in the show. You can't boil the ocean, but you, you can get a, um, surfboard and ride the waves that are happening anyway, similar to the slipstream stream. But I think the slipstream is even bigger, broader, more, um, more connected to the universe and and the practical reality of the world. It's like it's like in between those. And so you kind of if you could you can get a ticket, you you ride it. And that's where stuff happens. That's where businesses well, get, you know, that's where things go viral. <laughs> that's that's where things happen really fast. And, 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 you know, and it's, and it's funny, right? When we try to control things, where's that control coming from? That's coming from fear, mm -hmm. all fear, everything, mm -hmm. all of it. And so 
I guess one of the things that I started doing was asking myself, is this decision based on trying to control a situation because I'm afraid if it doesn't work or this or that? Um, or am I trying to just say, just embrace it and just say, well, be open to the change, the natural change, because there's probably, the here's the point. The universe has the most efficient path. It is already mapped out in an infinite way what is the fastest way to get to point A to point B? And in the ignorance that your own ego is smarter than the universe. Right. <laughs> but, it, but it's not, and that ignorance isn't like you're stupid or something, or it is, or you, you think you're arrogant or any of that. It, it all stems from, again, fear and the lack of letting yeah. go because you don't trust either yourself or the universe. Right. Or it, others. It, or other people. It's it's definitely a trust issue. And our culture throws that at us all the time because people make money off of the friction of that. They make money off of trust and the lack of trust. They make money off of fear and letting go and being secure. They make money, you know, they yeah, make the whole money financial off of industry bad stuff. is based off of that, right? Yeah. Yeah. The money is made off of of responding to uh, security and all the things that are Maslow based, you know, I am afraid of picket and I am, a, I am um, fearful of, okay, pick that and then make a product to align with that. And then you have a really easy way to sell it. And it's a problem solution. It's capitalism. Yeah, well, well, that's the old shareholder in authority. Those are versions 1.0 and 2.0, right? As we move mm -hmm. to 3.0, you know, I, I, it's like the media, right? Media sells fear, right? Yes, all and the that's time. That's their point because they want you glued to your TV, scared for your life. And in in all honesty, government does too. Yes. And and, and both parties do, right? Yes. They make you afraid of the other party and or yes. something catastrophic happening tomorrow and and yeah. you're, you're here to this guy, yeah. you know murderers are going to run through the streets because you know they've let people go during their term and uh let out murderers from jail right it's like we got a lot of that going on right now in wisconsin and it's completely and totally untrue right it's so bad it's right well it, it, but th there's the worst part is is it keeps us in this fear lack based loop on mm -hmm. things. So what happens is even if we want to break out of this cycle, you've got this collective consciousness, like crabs in a boiling pot pulling you back. Right. So, so it, it, it as a, you know, just talk about it from a, as a CEO, just about letting go. I mean, it communicating this, I don't know if anybody else has had this experience on this call. And and and, and what we do is I'm we really the one on the call. Oh, that would be me. Yeah. <laughs> well, we talk about we just talk about this as a collective. Everyone who's watching this, we're all doing this or we're applying this. We're all students of this. So we wanted to create yeah. this sort of opportunity, this open discussion to have this discussion. So if you are watching and you want to comment or you have questions, please make sure you do so and, and please interrupt. We'll jump in on them. But but it it's it's like, how do you, you know, tell your lawyer that <laughs> it's gonna be all this right. is a topic. law is irrelevant in the future universe in many ways because you don't <laughs> need to protect things because you're not coming from a lack or scarcity or afraid somebody's going to take something from you, right? So, right. so how do you, how do you, how do you, or investors? tell them, oh, we're not going to trademark this because that would imply that I'm afraid of somebody taking my trademark, my logo, using it inappropriately, and that keeps me in a fear and lack mentality, and I'm trying to rise above it. It's it's very challenging. I have to, you know, I've been through a lot of um, challenging times from a business perspective 2008 2009 and i do believe that all of in my heart of hearts i knew what to do 
And there were a whole lot of people who were attorneys or accountants telling me to do something else. And I, yeah. I regret to this day following their lead because I knew what was right. I knew, I knew things. So that intuition um, to me is, you, know, you talk about, oh, do we have to get car insurance or something like that? Um, viscerally, and I think most people, are, all right, back up, not making sense. There's the intellectual, rational self. Mm -hmm. And when you're in marketing or anything, you know that that's about 15% of the game. 85% of the game is visceral. It is not intellectual. It is emotional. And the, um, then the intellectual 15% is how visceral decisions are justified. Right. So the visceral me figured everything out, but listened to the intellectual me, which was just other people who have been trained. It's like, why, why don't you? That's like you the know, social your construct. Only thing you can That's do. our ego. Yeah. It's the ego. It's like, okay, um, I guess I'll do it. That was all wrong. Everything I did was wrong. And it was wrong because it was, I didn't follow the big sign the universe was giving me. I followed the signs that everybody else was pecking me like a duck with. So I'm just saying. We're like the crabs pulling you back in, right? And and it's it, it you know it it's really you trusting your gut becomes that intuition in many ways, right? It's like oh, trust your gut. Well, that's your gut. That's your emotion. That's your feeling. That's your compass. That's telling you that's probably the path. It's just right. Our intellectual but egos get but in the way a lot of times that there's a stigma against that it's, mm -hmm. it's there's a stigma to following your gut there's a stigma uh, you know it's like oh really these people are following their gut I'm not going to invest in them or you know i want data to prove right. data <laughs> you can do well the thing about data right it, it, it data. you said denise or data data potato potato um it, it you can interpret it and use it to sell any opinion. I mean, yeah. you can. And that's can, what people like me do anyway. or did. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. We're trained to do that, in fact, right? Absolutely. I yeah. am a spin master, man. I can spin yeah. anything for, you know, based on data. And the, the, the problem I have with data, I have a hundred problems with data, um, is that it's old. If you have data, it's not current. The, the world is moving so fast that if you uh, measure something in and it takes you um, six months to measure something, to do it cleanly and academically, it's like, okay, that's already a year old by the time it gets to me and I'm supposed to use it. And I don't think it's right anymore. But that's just my gut based on all the data points in my world going, everything changed, not current. I love understanding current data, which, you know, is is basically let the algorithms do what they do. I don't always agree with the algorithms and what they are doing, but the algorithms are current. Yeah. So, you know, what are you going to do? Okay, learn from the algorithms. Well, well and, and, and that's that's what I've realized in this process. If you go in with a team and you start acting from a consciousness based model and not everybody understands or you caught up or, or it becomes like an alien discussion. Like you're, what planet are you from? Like what, like how, why would you do that? It is so risky. You don't knowing, like you have a knowingness. What are you talking about? Synchronicities? Uh, you know, like this is all this. And this is the sad part about where, you know, we can go in a deeper discussion about, how religions caused a lot of this separation in itself and in medicine and science and, and, and all of this has created this sort of uh, gap, right? And, yes. and we're, we're rediscovering it now and part of the yes. point of the podcast. And it's bigger than spirituality. We're talking about laws of the universe, right? Yes. So, 
And, you know, the you, you mentioned before the qualitative and the quantitative and everybody wants a quantitative view. Mm -hmm. What we are saying is that this is a quantitative model for conduct. Yes. If you are vibrating at a low level, you your conduct is a certain way. If you are vibrating at a high level, your conduct is a different way. So right. this is this is this gets down to the bare bones of the the natural and uh, supernatural and and galactical order. Yeah. So um, that's what we're suggesting is a model for behavior, not what you were taught in school. Which I used to say, you know, when people said, "Well, how do you know this? Can you prove it?" And I used to say, "Well, I paid attention in school." <laughs> That's how I know yeah. it, um, because I always thought it was a really rude question. But um, now, if I paid attention in school, if I say that, I go, well, when I was in school, there was a whole lot of things that they taught me that were absolutely wrong and have been disproven by science. And I don't blame science because science is, is uh, it, it's moving all the time. And scientists are not dogmatic. Scientists right. change their opinion all the time. Because the good scientists do. Yeah. So, yeah. I was going to say a lot of scientists, certainly in academia that I've found, and I'm not saying everybody, there's certainly the good ones understand the difference. They, they, when they do attack their, their theses or their ideas, then they, they have a hard time moving them. Right. We see this all the time when a new theory or something comes into the scientific community, they're 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 treated like a pariah. Right. Like, hey, you're crazy. This will never work. And then as as other people realize this, then those individuals, I mean, we see it all the time. Right. And that's an ego block. Right. So even scientists even that are sworn to the their scientific method. Right. Will will yeah. still get in their own way. Right. The, and the thing that, you know, when you when you think about what happened with um, phones, like, mm -hmm. okay, now everybody's carrying a camera all the time. We are taking video of behavior that is now uh, enlightening people mm -hmm. to, and everyone knows where I'm going with this, so I'm not going to go there because you know where I'm going, but even... Take, using a phone to show how um, I remember growing up, the definition of a, a, a an animal was supposed to be didn't feel pain, didn't have emotion, didn't use tools, had no sense of logic. It's like, well, OK, we you know, that's about a second on Google to see all the examples of animals caring for each other and understanding the context of where they are and opening gates and, you know, octopi scooting away from their tanks to go into the drains. And they were wrong. They yes. were wrong. They were proven wrong. So all that stuff about animals don't feel pain. That's what I was, that's what I was brought up to believe. Wrong. The same they're even sensing this in carrots and plants too, right? And yeah. I think it goes I, back yeah. to your yeah, that goes back to your earlier statement that everything is that a lot is alive, that it's not just a dead object like yes. a you know, uh yes. Everything that well, there is, are no is, dead objects when well, you, you know what I mean. That a man-made piece of plastic, it still has energy in yeah. it, but it doesn't have consciousness in it, is my right. Point. Right. So the energy like, and and, yeah. uh, and maybe we'll find out that it does in fact have a consciousness, but it's just a level, low level, level one, like a mineral has a consciousness, right? So, um, so everything has and everything is the universe, right? So you so when you when you dislike something, it's as a, as in grace as yourself or anything good or anything. So it's all good, right? You, can't have bad it's all good yeah I, you know it's and if you think it's all bad um <laughs> you you should fix that in your head so you really so let's need to so let's talk about signs that you're in flow state or synchronicities because it's funny so you keep seeing a shadow behind me like flip the lights or something i don't know if you can see this on camera it's not me 
it is an actual uh there's hawks cooper's hawks flying above uh, above the house right now and so that's what's causing it's actually a bird from the outside blocking oh. some of the natural light that is coming in and birds are a big symbolism with flow it's really smart they they yeah. are connected to the consciousness yeah. more than most animals and and their spirits and everything else in fact you know when you start to read it, uh culturally there's a lot of symbolism in animals animal there goes the bird again flip through and um and hawks they really symbolize a lot of things or, or just birds of prey eagles really about flying above your tr your troubles you're you're above it all like that may in many ways symbolizes being in flow you are above all the noise that's happening in this sort of earthling sort of daily drama of media so to speak or, yeah. or most people's lives like they like to create drama yeah crows and ravens are actually super smart birds they're the smartest birds and yep. people associate them with uh witches and evil stuff and they're actually really smart birds <laughs> yeah well and, and if, if from a sim uh, symbolism perspective because that, that's the other part we got to remember is that everything we see is a reflection of stuff that's happening internally and how you perceive it right so you, we're getting somebody asked us like okay how do i pick out symbols signs from the universe what are signs from the universe right if i'm in flow everything is a sign like yeah. literally everything right so now there may be one more pronounced signs like hey wake up dummy that or you know we love you pay attention crows are are about change about death and rebirth a lot of ways right so yeah so when you see a lot of crows and you're going through a transition that or or maybe you don't see a transition coming it may be a symbol that says that you're going through a change you're going through a growth same with butterflies mm -hmm. Are the same thing in, in dragonflies dragonflies. Too. when my my mother died and she was you know she was in hospice at a hospital uh and i got the call at like three o'clock in the morning like she probably should come and i was gonna pick up my sister and um it was a very weird thing because stuff started to happen where i couldn't find my keys Mm. Who doesn't find their car keys? I put them in the same place all the time. I couldn't find my car keys. I didn't park the car right. And it's funny because um, when we were driving, this is like four o'clock in the morning, um, to get there, um, there was a crow sitting in the middle of, it's just sitting looking at us kind of like, and my sister goes, well, there's the crow. <laughs> I, it, yeah, there's the crow. And one of the things that we think, why all this, I can't find this. Where's this? I, like I pulled, I got to pull out of this parking space because I parked bad. I got to pull back in. She passed away like the second before we mm. got there. Wow. And I think that she didn't want us to be there when she actually passed. I think right. she, that was her personal thing. That's what I choose to believe. Oh, I, and, 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 and there's a high, I mean, regardless what you believe is the reality. So that is what happened. And, and, you know, we're communicated with by the universe and, or, you know, we can talk about soul groups, things like this in, in a different discussion all the time. Like nobody is gone because if you believe they're yeah. gone, you don't understand what we're saying here because it's like right. we're infinite. We're they it's like are not a gone. video game in a way. Yeah. Right. I have many, 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 many stories about they are not gone. Yeah. And um, when you work with a medium, like someone who actually does that for a living, uh, they basically say, or you take classes to be a medium and you can, they basically say you have to raise your vibration because, right. and you have to ask them to lower your vibration. So you, you ask them to come down mm. and then you come up and then you meet in the middle and that's how they work. And it's been a astonishing that you know since my husband died it's been astonishing um it was always astonishing but it's particularly astonishing 
what kind of information is coming. Well, so so let's talk a little bit deeper on just some examples of when I would, again, trying to make this, how do I apply this in a, in a, in a business context, but also just individually, right? And, and so let's talk specifics on things that we do or experiences. So I, I want to share one experience, which is a real small experience it's it's not a big deal but it, it's a powerful i think example of my own realization of letting go so i'm at a, a restaurant local restaurant here in great falls virginia uh, with my wife susan grabbing breakfast and we're sitting outside and, and i ordered a couple eggs over easy with some toast and and some hash browns and some bacon and and so so she she, she delivered it and the waitress, wonderful waitress, she delivered it. And, and I like salt and pepper. There was no seasoning on the eggs. It's fine. I, I had salt and pepper. And there was no salt and pepper on the table. But, and she, the waitress left without asking, like, hey, is there anything else? She just said, here's your food. And she left the table. So I immediately, because guess what? I have to control things and I have to make it right because it's not right because I'm not going to trust the universe is going to just, the universe is going to know I want salt and pepper for my eggs or this individual, this lady, I'm going to have to get up and go get it, right? So I get up off my seat. I go to walk inside. We're outside. I go to walk inside. The minute I was doing that, the, the, the wonderful waitress had brought over a tray. I don't put ketchup, but I had hot sauce, salt and pepper, everything that I needed and put it right on the table. All I had to do was just let go and wait. That's all I had to do. I had already ordered my food, right? That's the work, the effort, right? I had to order my food. I had to get myself to the restaurant, but I just, I wanted to control. And, and, and that's when it, that honestly is that simple was what hit me in between the eyes that made me finally realize the difference of power versus force or, you know, control versus letting go and being in flow. Right. And, mm -hmm. and it's so, it's so simple, right. It, 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 you're like, well, that's such a little minor. How do you do apply that to a big multinational deal? I, I can tell you this also, how do I apply it in the business side? So when I was buying uh, Sakunas originally, and you know, for those who don't know, I, I bought a small agency back in 2015 after leaving the corporate world as a global CMO, chief marketing officer, and and it's something I always wanted, lifelong dream, wanted in a, you know an advertising agency and be in the agency where I just loved art and business, how it all came together. Um, I quit my job in the corporate world. And I just quit. Talk about letting go. I just quit. I didn't have a job prospect. I just knew it wasn't right. Right. I just was just following my gut. I said, it will all work out. I didn't know any of the stuff that we're talking about right now. Okay. So I just, I just. Yeah. Adam's a newbie. Uh, yeah. I'm a little much more on the newer, but I mean, I have the natural talent, I guess. Right. The ability. Well, you're, to... I'm saying you're like a spiritual newbie. Yeah, and you yeah, were also like, an ad agency. Like I haven't been practicing it. I haven't been practicing it from a spiritual perspective very much, right? Or a consciousness perspective. And just the household I grew up with, it very much brute force, just put more effort, whatever it takes, and it was successful for my parents, right? Um, it wasn't as successful as it could have been if they just let go. But much further. Anyway, so so I'm I buy the agency, or I didn't I didn't buy the agency yet. And say it was about a six month process. The, we went back and forth negotiating with the owner. She wanted way too much money than what it was worth. Um, got it down to a lower price. Then I just, I had to get the financing. I didn't even know how the financing I was going to get this because I, it was, you know, one in one, like 1 1.3 million or so. I, how, how am I going to get this? I didn't have it in my own bank account to, to pay, to buy it. I, I just went on faith. It's just like, it's going to provide, it's going to provide. I know this is going to work out. I just feel it in my gut. I'm going to go with my gut. It's going to work out. I remember sitting after going back and forth, probably six months on just what the price was. So we're not even to like a deal like it. And two times, two times, the first time, uh, the first two times she act, kind of walked away from the deal. She's like, Oh, it's too low. I'm not going to come back to it. And then, and, when she came back with the price, it still wasn't the price it needed to be. I was told what the value was. I was like, this is what I can do. And I just let go. 
I just totally let go, surrendered to it. I was like, I didn't have, I was interviewing for corporate jobs, but I couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. Like even something in my soul told me I was dying in every one of these interviews, a little bit more was dying in me. And, um, and it happened, it happened. But the minute I let go of the outcome is the minute it accelerated and happened quickly. The bank loan put in place perfectly. Everything just happened perfectly. And then next thing you know, I'm moving back from Dallas to Harrisburg. Now I'm in DC, but, but so that point, and it, but this was me being ignorant to the process. Mm -hmm. And then it was years. I'm talking, I had this breakfast experience. I'm talking like last year. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so like, like, I, I you know, I, who am I as a, as a bit of a noob to teach others, but I'm just telling you, like, I have been interacting with it. And it goes back to your chart before, Denise, when we talk about, I'm just, I'm just going to pull this up again here. Control. It's the control, but no, but it's the challenge and the ability. It's getting confidence with it, right? It's like with anything. When you try something and you get positive feedback back, and that's probably the, that's our nature, right, for evolution and so to speak. But it's yes. just part of who it is. We keep doing it, get more positive, do a little bit more, get more confidence, and and that gave me that confidence to get more and more and remain in flow and then know when I was in it, right. So, yeah. so I I wanted I just it's just an interesting perspective in the fact that I I had to try get good feedback try again oh yeah well this might yeah. work try a little bit again oh man this is it work like work wow this is like how does everyone not know this this is like a hack like a like a shortcut and and i was still doing <laughs> the work i had to do the ma talk to the lawyers do all this stuff i i was living off credit cards to start you know because i had no income you know there's a lot of things that I had to do, but, you know, I never lost faith and I always believed. And I think that's the key element, Yeah. Right? but the path to getting I mean, there was far from what I thought. The, the Bible and uh, all the other books that reflect religion all talk about that. There are parables upon parables that talk about it just belief and you know, not, not trying to push a situation or outwit the universe or God or whatever you want to yeah. call it. I mean, that's a pretty common well, thing. There's a whole philosophy with Taoism that is on this, right? About mm -hmm. just letting be, letting it go, yeah. let with the flow, right? And right. And, and the thing that I, I hear a lot when someone wants to be a cynic is like okay so i shouldn't do anything like i should just like lay there and let the it's like no 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 that's not what i say no you shouldn't be just you shouldn't it's not it's binary and it is binary but we still like i said last week have to plant we have to plant the crop right we have stuff to do to maintain our lives and the lives of the people that we love and care about. And I would argue to maintain the lives of everybody on the planet, including mm -hmm. the trees and the animals, there's stuff we're supposed to do and flow and beliefs. Um, it's that old native American term. We're the gardeners on this planet. We're, yeah. We, we have, we are the gardeners. We are the ones here to take care of it. Yes. And each other. Cause yes. we're all connected. Each other. And that's kind of an important thing mm -hmm. where I believe that people fracture it um, because they haven't experienced it. So they, you know, someone who has not experienced themselves um, like a medium who is obviously channeling someone and is telling you things that only you and this person knew, um, if you haven't experienced it, you kind of say it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. But you can't do that. You have to let science catch up to spirituality. It is catching up to spirituality. Yeah. Very quickly. Plus our conversation, right? I mean, it's exciting. Yeah. 
I mean, uh, and um, that kind of catch up. Fast forward five years, the things that everyone laughs about right now, um, or okay, go back five years. No one is talking about aliens and spaceships. No one is talking right. about that stuff. Now, uh, frankly, I just everybody's say I was, talking about okay. it. Yeah, and five years from now, Adam, you might reveal what planet you are from, but five years from now, multiple planets bigger and different because yeah. it's all happening very fast. Well, our understanding is just, we're just getting just a deeper and wider understanding of things. And I think everybody is ascending in a consciousness perspective, everybody at different rates, but it's all converging now. You know, it, it's, it's funny. So when we talk about this, like, how do we get the business in a flow peak flow state? Right? So, so we talked about it at an individual level and, and, you know, I mean, I think we, everybody has their own method, I, I believe. And I think you have to do it. What works for you? I think you should explore multiple options. For me, I, I start every day meditating for an hour, going through my energy centers or chakras, whatever you want to call them. I focus probably like 10 minutes on each one of my energy centers. So like a little bit over an hour. And I do that every day and it's been a, a huge dramatic change for me. Um, but everybody else does. Some people like, jogging like i yeah. run and stuff but not from a meditative perspective right but sometimes fishing if you go fishing and you're like fishing oh it's a, it's a meditation fishing. so you know? so like individually how do we get our teams and there was a um there's there's conversation about really power versus force right so we can't force our teams to do this right and, and I think it would be wrong and arrogant for us to try to do that because everybody's at their own time and their own spiritual journey or consciousness journey or whatever yeah. we want to call it. But how do we how do we create a, an environment that allows people to flow together? Right. And there's a, there's a lot of studies out there. There's a lot of things like there's great examples of of great companies doing certain things in, in a more sporadic way, maybe not pulling it together from a consciousness understanding, but they're, you know, having well, massage know therapists come, they have meditation rooms in, in their yeah. offices, things like and that. They put the Myers Briggs like thing in front of their door. It's like, Oh, this person is motivated by this. And right. Likes to, likes to tell stories as opposed to get bullet points. Okay. They do that. There's there's a lot of all the psychology, uh, workplace psychology is something that is a big business. Yep. And a lot of people are making a lot of money at it. Nothing, there's not that there's sure. anything wrong yeah. with that because yeah. it is helpful at varying levels. I mean, we could put one together too um, because of all the things that we know. Uh, I often wonder because there's a lot of people in the world who aren't in the kinds of creative activities that we're in, you know, mm -hmm. for a creative person, business is creative, mm -hmm. creative in an advertising agency is creative. Mm -hmm. There are advertising agencies that have put showers in so creative people can go take a shower and get an insight. Because that sensory thing, when you start really getting into your senses, touch, audio, uh, smell, all of that. I mean, there's aromatherapy. Um, there's also music therapy. There's art therapy. When you get into your senses, you become um, a, a better candidate for flow. Mm -hmm. But what about what about the people who work in construction or right. the people who work in restaurants or, you know, this sounds all like a very elitist thing, a very white collar thing. Not everybody is um, doing something that, you know, business can do. They still have to do their jobs. Right. So, I, you know, when I think about. I think everybody's got to, has to, every individual on this planet, regardless of your economic strata or where you are at, everybody's got to um, 
everybody's got to find a way to flow. Yeah. And then whatever it is that you do for money becomes a better thing because you're getting your flow. You're getting your flow someplace else. You're getting your flow from, you know, closing your eyes and being outside and listening to the mm -hmm. symphony of earth. You're getting your flow somewhere else. But everybody's yeah, got to so, get so, so like you think, Yeah, so you think about it, right? So things you could do, especially in, in the, I guess, in more of the corporate world, right, where we spent most of our, spend most of our time, you know, having meetings while you walk, right, outside. Mm -hmm. That, I mean, that, that's that's one way the, the team, I know we're all virtual and all that other stuff, maybe even starting, um, and these are, these are just ideas, and these are things that I know other people have been success for them, um, even taking a minute when we start a, a meeting, spending the first minute with the breathing, like we talk mm -hmm. about hold the breath in, everybody close their eyes and just get to a, a clear state. And, and even ask the question of what we're trying to achieve in the meeting in that meditative state. Like that, that is an exceptional way of doing it. And you have to, everybody has to be open-minded to it. And I think that's where an environment where you have to create safety and trust. Mm -hmm. right? Safety. Yes. It, it, right. Exactly. And, and, so, and so then how do you create trust and safety, which, and that is saying, doing the same thing you say, if you're going to say, okay, like you can fail, like it's all good. I want you to try new things. But the minute they try something new and if it doesn't work and you come down hard on them, well, what do you expect, right? But unfortunately that's most businesses. And why do you come down hard on them, right? Because you're scared. Right. You're scared of either losing your job or losing a client or losing something. That's the key. So as a, as a manager or as an executive yeah. or a CEO, you have to be, you have to let go of all the results, your yes. revenue targets, your, your, your yeah. worry about partners, your, uh, you know, our, our clients, your worry about yeah. like, all of those things need to literally, you have to chip away at it one at a time until that all is left. Right. It's just right. And I know that there's probably a whole bunch of people who are watching this right now who are going, Adam, you had me and now you lost me. Because <laughs> it's like, if I did that, I would be out of business tomorrow. And that's a fear, right? It is a fear. <laughs> I are, you know, I have had discussions about that with regards to minimum wage because, okay, raise the minimum wage. Mm -hmm. Well, if I did that, then I would be out of business tomorrow. So it's a bigger discussion because no, you won't. Well, It'll well, all... So Denise, the question I would ask myself, right? Is, is so if I'm the client, okay, say you have a bad client or customer who's really just not on this consciousness journey with you at all, but they are they are making money for you, right? I mean, and you're using it as an income, so to speak. And and you're like, but if I lose this, I'm out of business, or I'm gonna have to lay people off, or 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 right? You know, in your mind, our minds like to go to the fear, uh, you know, but in all that scary place, but that's just ourselves lying to ourselves. So, so then you have to dissect of like, like why am why am I afraid of this? Well, right. and just keep going digging deeper on yourself, and then you know you do have to trust and let go. Like, so what I'm saying is maybe not fire a customer tomorrow, right? right? But maybe when you have a new sales prospect and instead of, oh, I need the revenue, so I'm going to ignore all the warning signs because I'm afraid that if I don't have the revenue, I won't be able to keep the lights on. Maybe you pass up on them because yeah. you know the universe is abundant, right? that another better customer will come and fill that space. Because if you have those customers that are taking your revenue and, and your time, then you don't have any time for the letting in the abundance. Exactly. Plus, it, it, that's hard. I know that's yeah. extremely hard, but that's the work. That that's is the work. The work. And like Absolutely. competition, right? Oh, oh, did you see that competitor? He just posted a press release. We've got to answer them. We've got to have a press release too. 
And, and where, where do you think that is? That that's coming from a scarcity perspective. That's not a that's not a point of view where it's oh you know we're collaborative. Good for them. This is awesome. Good for them. But our clients are going to be ours. But that's the difference of the old growth versus the new growth right. model, right? That we're talking right. about. So right. like it's in it's in so many things as we make decisions as executives or as just people, people. in our lives, like. Um, oh, I can't, I can't, oh, I, I won't talk to them about this because I'm afraid they'll be upset with me. I mean, that's a pretty generic thing that happens all the time. Oh, I can't tell them this because they'll be upset with me. I can't give them feedback because they're going to be upset with me. I'm afraid. And, and all you're doing is putting your own fear on yourself and you're limiting. And, mm-hmm. and by holding that secret back, it always comes back. And that's really what we're talking about. Flow state only comes consistently, consistently, either at the strategic level or the tactic le- tactical level, once you have fully gotten to a place of peace in the point of, yeah, it's going to work out. It always works out because it doesn't matter. Like this is all small and temporary compared to our infinite souls and our yeah. infinite beings. Yes. I um, used to... <laughs> coach Little League, um, and I like the boys, and uh, my daughter was in it too, but, uh, and I went to a coach's clinic that was run by the Milwaukee Brewers, and it was so cool because we were in the stadium, and we had the coaches all take turns, so the the coach that was the, um, your first base coach came up and talked about how, you know, they, they work with people who are, you know, on first and they have to run and steal a base. And they had a lot of coaches there and behind us, behind them was a guy, uh, trying out for catcher. Oh my God, we're there watching this. And it's all happening behind the people that were talking to us in the coaches clinic. And then the, after that happened, the coach from uh, who was working with him or whoever this, whoever was like evaluating him came over and said to us, he said, the toughest thing about teaching these people, they all have such good skills. They all have, you know, a, a body, a physical body that can do this job. The toughest thing is to make sure they understand that they can make a mistake, that they can screw up. And Baseball is all about screwing up and then knowing that in an instant, you got to make a play. It's all about letting go. Baseball is the coolest, most transcendental and people who love baseball because it's so complex, but it's so it's all such a mind game between people and between and a mind game with an individual with themselves so it's uh it's it's that's why i love baseball i love baseball and, um, it, because it, it's it, like and, that, and that's right gotta, you see this and you see this denise in sports teams all the time right yeah yeah you you know and hitting a baseball is nothing but flow um nothing you know nothing but you know we had roger maris's his his record might go down we, we had that last night. We watched it. And the swing is so effortless when someone hits a a um, home run. It's, that it's, it's clean. Hits. The noise, like everything, Beautiful. right? It's like it's like hitting the perfect drive in golf, right? It's just yeah, this is like it's just beautiful you it's can tell so you can true. hear that you can hear the difference right you can hear it you can it's feel a, it's it a, a vibration I, of flow right yeah and i would argue that this happens more than um random or statistical probability it's like i know this guy's gonna hit a home run now well, i would argue that it's it is visceral and you can it's palpable and you you can feel it when someone is at that point when they're at the you know they're ready to hit that you know it's going to happen because they're well, emitting well, it, so, much energy that it's like here it comes here it comes there it is 
So I guess the real the real key though then is is really trying to get us at an individual level up the ladder from a consciousness. So we're thinking positive thoughts more than negative, right? Outnumbered. And then and then once and that allows us to let go because we get experience working in those higher vibrations. And we don't want to go back to those low vibrations. It's like hanging out with friends you haven't seen in years. And you were at their vibration at one point, And then we get back together. You're like, I don't want to sit around and gossip about people. Negative thoughts. Yeah. And it's like, I didn't realize, right? I didn't realize how, how far I've come versus everything else. And so then it's, it's like at a at a, an organizational level, you can see the difference. And again, going back to the sports teams, which is you can see it in their wins and losses. You can actually see it. it those are the byproduct of it, right? Just like mm -hmm. you know, in, in some ways in business, revenue isn't always the byproduct of it. In the long term, it is, but there are plenty of ways to make money in an unconscious way, right? As we we've, we've yeah. seen, and um, and you can get yeah. big doing it. You'll never get, you will never be sustainable. I'll yeah. say that this is like why dictator countries get big in dictatorships, but they always fall. They it's never sustainable. It's a it's yeah. not the cards. And the concept of a resume to me, everybody that I've ever hired, mm -hmm. and I've had a few bad ones. Okay, I admit it. Yeah, we Those all have bad ones. Have all been resume based. It's like okay, this person. Mm -hmm. Hey, it checks all the boxes. Okay, fine. I need them right now. I'll hire. Um, yeah. Everybody that connected and was part of, and I do believe that as a business, we flowed. We were in synchronicity as a business for several years, but it's because we hired people not based on their resume. Mm -hmm. We hired them based on their vibration. Right. Like, well, it, and, and, you know, people will say, oh, that's cultural it, fit. And I'm like, well, yeah, yeah, no, no, not really. fit. it is. It is it cultural is. fit, but you're not seeing the depth of why it's a cultural fit. Like every like HR. Yes. And this is one of our topics in future date HR. Right. HR so focuses on the surface level. They don't understand. It's like they yeah, don't understand that's the depth. right now. Yeah. Right. The reason the why it's cultural is fit is because we're on the same vibration. Right. HR is all about, you know, now yeah. they're scanning. It's it's like search engine marketing and, you know, yeah. HR is get all it. effed up right now. But well, well, so let's talk about teams that are high vibration versus low vibration in their results. I um, I'll use the Washington Commanders, which is a terrible authoritarian name, by the way. And and I was and I'm not saying Redskins is any better. Um, so the Washington football teams better i guess in a generic way but but commanders it, i will it not is, call it, them the commanders by the way the command yeah the commanders were ironically called the commies for short which is like the <laughs> irony of of being the dc team uh, so so the commanders i'll call them that command is control command and control i'm going to command you you're going to do what i do i'm going to try to command the universe it is the culture that that team has created since the Snyder family took over and, 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 and that has created a, a real toxic environment. Have you ever noticed anybody who's a Washington football team fan? Well, we always joke with saying, Hey, you know, you'll, you'll not do anything with us, but the minute you leave, you'll win a Super Bowl. And, and if you look at some track coaches too, by the way, um, coaches have won Super Bowls when they were like our offensive coordinator and, we were, and they were doing terrible and they go leave the team. And why is that? Because it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a vibration. It's something you can't see, but it is, it manifests its way in, you know, leadership styles and, uh, you know, name, team names and uh, injuries and, and, yeah. and right. And, and so if somebody always asked me like, Oh, well, what do you think about the Washington football team? Are they going to win? They're not going to win until they change their vibration as an organization. And that is not going to change until there's a consciousness evolution at the leadership level. And, it, yeah. and that's not happening anytime soon, unfortunately. So Right. And speaking of football, because, oh, you've opened the door to football. And I will exactly. talk, Let's about, talk about it. We're in the season. Okay. I will talk about it again. I... The, the whole 
the whole Aaron Rodgers thing, which the guy's amazing. Okay. He is estranged from his family. You never hear him talk about his parents or his, I think he's got a brother. Never, ever. He's estranged. He, he and the family are like, Bleh. so he's gone through. He's an NFL star. He's had the chip on his shoulder. He, because of the draft, he became his precision is what makes him a phenomenal quarterback. His mm -hmm. intelligence combined with his precision. He's on a journey right now because he, had, okay, he had that kind of flow, but he hasn't had the personal flow. Relationships mm -hmm. gone bad um, mm -hmm. all over the place. So right. now, admittedly, he is trying to find his own um, positivity. He's trying to understand his connection to the universe. He's wearing nala beads um, when he gets off the plane. Um, he is in a journey because he has realized that all of what he had is meaningless. Right. And I mean, he did lie. He lied. He skirted the truth. And, you know, being true to yourself means you don't lie about anything. Right. Um, and so. Right, because when you lie, you're afraid. Yeah. And he was afraid. And, and you know, if you're afraid, then her. you're not letting go. Yeah. Right. And there's yeah. stuff that we probably don't know. Like he might have been covering for oh, the sure, Green Bay Packers sure. who, who were afraid. And the Green Bay Packers allowed the lie to happen and everybody knew it, but it didn't want to get out and he didn't want to throw them under the bus. Whatever we don't know. Sure. But you know, I respect the fact that the guy is now on a quest, and the quest is for him to feel good about himself because he is the universe. He's gotten there. Jim Carrey got there. People who are at the Oprah height, Winfrey got there. Yes, they got there because they realized that whatever it is that they accomplished didn't amount to a hill of beans in this world because they know that that oneness is is, is the thing that is important. Yeah. And makes them feel better and solves all the issues that they may have had in their life. Well, those issues, we'll right? There. Those issues are reflections of what you're supposed to overcome to get to this state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so if we, you know, if we think about that, when I don't like the way that person looks or that person, why do they have all this money? They, they stole it from somebody or I, he shouldn't have gotten the promotion or that person really rubs me the wrong way. What you're really saying, right, is I see that in myself and I don't like it. Mm -hmm. And and so when somebody makes you upset, there's only one person and you shouldn't you should love yourself always because yeah. you should. And you're that's all there is on the other side is just love. So. It, 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 but like a lot of people, we, we, we skate, we stay in fear because it allows us to not, or we tell ourselves stories to protect ourselves so that mm -hmm. we don't have to address our true, their truth, which right. once we address that truth, that's when we get set free. And that's when we stay in a very strategic flow state and, and a very tactical, you going in and out tactical. So so we're, we're almost at time, but I feel like we, we got to I, I have a guided meditation. You, I didn't tell you that. What was that? that? The flow. Or did you want to do one? Yeah. Oh, no. no. So, no. I, so I think I, I want to talk about just some ways people are trying to get in the flow state. Just let's talk about that a little bit further because I don't think we really – dug into it as deep as some other people have. I mean, well, we're at time, of course. We, we are do. in time. We are at time. 
but but again, yeah. this is a little bit of flow. We can create another podcast after this to do to cover yeah. that even deeper. And we're not going to end here as far as this is the last time we're going to talk about this, right? So I right. think that's important for everyone to know. Um, I've you know, never done a guided meditation, but can I do one? Let's do it. So we want to end it on a guided meditation. Let's go for it. That was kind of cool last time when you ended on a guided. I have never, ever done a guided meditation, but um, this is how I get to flow. All, all right. I'm so we want to you want to close our eyes and do breath or you, yeah. you got us. You got us. I got you're it. in control. I got it. Close your eyes, everyone. Mm -hmm. Close your eyes. And the reason you're closing your eyes is so you can focus on everything that you can hear and everything associated with your body and everything associated with your breath. Your breath coming in is the key to flow. Imagine your breath inhaling and making a very long um, journey to the bottom of your belly and then coming back up to your mouth. That journey looks like a long, long, oblong thing. Now, when your breath is at the top of the journey, you're making a curve. When your breath is at the bottom of the journey, you're making a curve and there's straight lines in between. Breath in, curve, go down to your lower plexus, curve, come back up, breath out. Breath in, curve, go back down, curve, come back out. Focus on those curves. Those curves are where the flow is. If you can feel a little surge at the curve, that's what it feels like all the time. So you live in those curves. and Focus on those curves and feel those curves right down in your naughty bits. Okay. Open your eyes. Did you do it? Hello? Yes, I did it. I was I was in it for sure. I, I've never done that before. That was excellent. Thank you for that. Yeah, it's at the curves. It's all like at that moment where your breath turns. It's like it's like it's you're almost, not breathing. It's like being on a uh, amusement park ride, right? At that when yeah. you're about ready to go over the top and you're going yeah. down. And what you feel, that's where that's where flow is, and that's where you can live it. Yeah, so like a, like a little bit of like that roller coaster. I felt like when I was getting closer to that. I was, yeah, that's excellent. Thank you, Denise. Thank you for that. So with that, now that we're all in a nice flow, um, that that concludes our episode two. Let go and let flow. <laughs> and and I just want to thank everyone for joining us, Denise. Again, thanks thanks for being on with me. This is incredible. I'm totally grateful. Again, thank you. <laughs> And we'll keep doing you. this because this is a journey and we will, we will try to keep making this relatable for all levels because we're all at different paces. Um, and this is a community we're building of karmic capitalists in many ways. So enjoy it. I'd love to hear it. And plus again, comment below if you, if you watched the first episode with us and you found your penny, I would love to hear <laughs> you found your penny. So, so please. And, and again, last thing, last but not least, I want to just share because I didn't share this last time and I want to make sure everybody gets a chance to see, you know, this is the best way to contact us. So a Vasquez at made with merit.com and econky at made with merit.com. You can also follow us on LinkedIn. Don't be a stranger. This is a community. We're, we're building our soul tribe together. We have, we have known each other for in, in, infinity before this experience and we're going to know each other for infinity after us and a couple good marketing books that help you along the journey also and there's some other projects underway that denise and i are working on and we're excited to share them when they get developed so again thank you thank you so much denise thank you and everybody i'll see you next we'll see you next week
Take care. Bye.